Hello, you're watching Book Zone. I'm Sam Norman, and I'm going to be talking to Ben McIntyre about his novel Agent Zigzag, which is published by Bloomsbury. Ben, give me a little rundown of the plot of Agent Zigzag. It's fascinating. Right. Agent Zigzag was the code name for a man called Eddie Chapman, who was a professional crook before the war. He was a burglar, safecracker, con man, blackmailer, essentially. He's a pretty nasty piece of work. And he... Chapman happened to be in prison in Jersey in 1940. He was, he'd been on the run um, after breaking into a co-op bank <laughs> and was on, his, uh, was on the run in, in Jersey where he was imprisoned and captured and imprisoned when the Nazis invaded Jersey in 1940. And he made a deal effectively with the German occupiers that he, if they would train him to be a spy, he would spy on behalf of the, of the Reich. So sure enough, he was taken from the prison in Jersey to uh, a special training camp in western France, in Nantes, where he was trained in various spying techniques, parachuting, mm -hmm. combat, blowing things up. He was actually quite good at blowing things up anyway because he'd been a sort of safe cracker for most of his life, so he knew his way around gel ignite pretty well. And he was then given a mission by the head of this station. This ab the Abwehr was the German military secret intelligence. And he was given a mission by a man called uh, von Groening, Stefan von Groening, although Chapman never knew his real name. He only ever knew him by his nom d'espion, by his spy name, which was Grauman. And Grauman gave Chapman a mission, which was to blow up a particular aircraft factory in, in North London, in Hatfield. So in the winter of 1942, Chapman was loaded onto a Luftwaffe plane, a focke Luftwaffe plane, flown over Cambridge, dropped out of this plane, um, at which point his pack, which was unnecessarily full of gear, got stuck on the bottom of the plane. Um, <laughs> so instead of, la so he, there he was flying along at 300 miles an hour with this sort of flailing. But it, and then one of the pilots managed to sort of kick him out and he went down, which was quite a good thing in a way that he'd been delayed because it meant that he missed his, his drop uh, for reasons that I'll explain. Right. So Chapman lands, hits the ground and uh, immediately defects to MI5. He makes contact with... Uh, well, of his own volition. He of it, well, of his own volition. Chapman in later life would maintain that he had always intended to do this, that he mm. had never really intended to be a German spy, that he was always planning to defect to Britain. I frankly don't quite believe that. Chapman was a born opportunist. I mean, he seized every, every chance to further himself. Um, and I think if Germany had won the war, Chapman would have ended up you know, yeah. on their side. So I, you know, th which is what makes him interesting to me. I yep. think he's not a one-dimensional spy. He's a, or a sort of James Bond character. He's a much more complicated character than that. How did you find him? Chapman. Uh, Chapman died in 1997. He lived. He lived a long time. I never knew him, um, but I remember when he died. I remember seeing the obituary that appeared in the Times and thinking, "That's an extraordinary story," because it was based essentially on Chapman's own recollections. Mm -hmm. which were partly mendacious and partly restricted by what he could say because he was still under the Official Secrets Act, so he couldn't actually spill the beans. But he managed to hint throughout his life at all the things that he'd done. And I remember thinking in 1997, if MI5 ever releases these files, they're going to be fantastic. And then sure enough, beginning in 2002, the security service began releasing most of its files. And over the last, uh, up until the point when the book was published, they, they progressively released everything. So there are 1,700 pages of documents on, on Agent Zigzag. What's coming up next? My next project is a sort of, in a way, a sort of spin-off from Agent Zigzag, which is um, the Imperial War Museum this year uh, is mounting a huge exhibition of Ian Fleming and James Bond, because mm -hmm. this is the 100th anniversary of Ian Fleming's birth. So there's a huge amount of Bondiana going on, and there's this we wonderful have a exhibition. Copy of we a have a copy of here, which is book. this is it. This is uh, for your eyes only, Ian Fleming and James Bond, and it's 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 really a look at where Ian Fleming ends and where James Bond begins, ah. because Fleming wrote in a very particular way. He based all his characters, all his plots, all the travel, all the gizmos on things that he himself knew, so that really everybody in Bond. And everything in Bond can be traced to a kind of factual origin. So a lot of it is about the model for Miss Moneypenny, who is still alive, by the way. Oh, Wonderful really? at 92. No, she's Good tremendous. Lord. Um, What's she called? Uh, I won't say, because oh, okay, uh, okay. 
it gives it away. But, <laughs> right, um, right. but um, so various characters are still alive. Not many, it has to be said. But part of, part of the fun is also trying to work out how much of Bond himself is Fleming, because Fleming was a spy operator during the Second World mm. War. He worked in naval intelligence. Um, he wasn't an active spy himself, but he knew all about spying. And and al almost all the plots in Bond come from Fleming's own experience. So it's a lovely way of it's been great fun of trying to try to work out where that often very tricky dividing line is between what is what is true and what is imagined. There's a theme, isn't there? Mm, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, best of luck with both of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. And I was talking to Ben McIntyre about his novel Agent Zigzag, which is published by Bloomsbury.